uh, improve the strength of the muscle and because uh, muscles are becoming weak so the uh, there is a burden on bone and that's why bones uh, facing uh, lots of uh, pressure like that is it uh, like that or something so that i want to know yeah see uh, muscles they help in the movement of uh, the whole musculoskeletal system is actually helping us in moving moving our body and performing various functions and uh, muscles they need a lot of energy for contractions and uh, relaxations for the uh, various activities they need a lot of energy and we derive that energy from the food we eat and that energy gets converted into the food gets converted into energy and uh, so to have strong musculature and uh, to have all the muscles functioning properly we need proper nourishment to the musculoskeletal system so which means we need proper food that is one thing another thing is we also need proper circulation so that whatever body is trying to uh, distribute particularly the um, well, micronutrients which are there in our food those will uh, actually reach each and every part of the body particularly muscles when the circulation is good so this circulation is again very important um, blood circulation actually ensures proper nourishment to all the parts of the body so it is very important for us to have proper blood circulation and blood circulation improves uh, you no know, when, when the blood circulation improves nourishment to muscles improves and strength to the strength of the body improves so the best way to strengthen the body strengthen the musculature strength give uh, nourish the muscles is to improve the blood circulation and for that the best way is to do abhyanga abhyanga is application of oil to the body so any oil simple sesame oil till oil warm oil apply to the whole body keep it for some time then take hot water bath that will ensure increase in blood circulation and proper supply of nutrition to each and every part of the body it will also help in increasing the strength and flexibility of muscles which even though some people have good muscles if they are not flexible they are of no use we have a disease called muscular dystrophy where muscles are good there is no atrophy atrophy is like weakening of muscles uh, you know shrinking of muscles dystrophy is dysfunction <laughs> muscles are good they look bulky but they are not flexible they are not contracting and relaxing properly so for that uh, you know flexibility of the muscles abhyanga application of oil is very important of course we need nourishing food like lots and lots of fruits vegetables dry fruits milk um but uh, all these things will help but even if you give the best nutrition to the body if it will not reach the muscles then muscles will um be weak, become weak and of course we will feel pain why i am emphasizing more on this abhyanga it seems just like what will happen if you apply oil to the body in fact uh, many people many of my patients say they are applying oil to the body is a headache daily how can we do it you you know apply oil clothes will become oily bathroom will become oily like that but uh, with simple you know changes in the lifestyle simple practices 
and uh, simple things like using um, a herbal bath powder after uh, applying the oil to the body you, you can keep your bathroom clean and uh, you can keep a pair of clothes uh, which you can wear after applying the oil if you want to do some uh, um exercise or surya namaskar or expose your body to sunlight you can wear a pair of clothes which are oily okay but no problem once in a week we can um, you know wash them but applying oil is very important i'll show you why i'll give you a live example um so i previously also i spoke about uh, this thing so so this we have this um, wonderful institution called arya vaidyasala kotakkal so and uh, i'm just uh, when the person pk varian you know he was the chief physician and managing trustee of arya vaidyasala so he lived from 5th june 1921 to 10th july 2021 more than 100 years so dr p k warrior who lived for 100 years you know he was managing this arya vaidyasala arya vaidyasala kottakkal it's not just a hospital it is a college uh, it's a doomed university and there is a huge big pharmacy and they have a big hospital and of course there are chains of hospitals so dr pk warrior when people asked him what is the secret of your um, you know health so he said every day i apply oil to the body that is the secret of my health so every day i apply oil to the body and uh, he like you know even one day before his death also he was managing all the whole all the three huge institutions at the age of 100 years he was running the show he was like a big entrepreneur and uh, he was like a role model for all ayurveda doctors so and he says his secret is oil application in ayurveda they say abhyanga maacharet nityam every day you need to apply oil to the body that will help in so many ways it's not just strengthening the muscles <laughs> overall health will be improved just by applying oil to the body nothing else little oil not you need you know you need not take a lot of oil and uh, do a full body massage or something like that. just little four to five spoons four to five spoons and that will be more than enough four to five spoons of oil heat it a little and apply it to the body so you can try it for 14 days and just get back to me how you feel just give two weeks of time and see how the body responds nothing else no medicines nothing else only applying oil to the body just try it and see how your muscles become strong and flexible and how your aches will go away of course if you have some specific pain like you have told about the shoulder pain or neck pain so you can use oils like mahanarayana thailam which will also help in relieving the pain but even if you don't get medicated oils like mahanarayana thailam or prasarani thailam you can just simply use til oil and if the place where you are is very cold you can use mustard uh, mustard oil mustard oil also gives some heat to the body so either uh, sesame oil or mustard oil you can use so any questions uh, thank you priya i am uh, already uh, having that uh, sesame oil uh, i am using that but only for my knee uh, its back muscles of knee only okay they are uh, when i'm sitting for longer time uh, during traveling so while standing i am finding difficulty 
So uh, okay. before uh, getting up, uh, which muscles uh, lose, like that, yes. and then I yes. can stand. Otherwise, it will be very easy. Okay. So I'm what using weight. Um, now I'm. I will, I'm not uh, doing that. Uh, keeping which I'm directly using. So I will now use that hot oil to the whole body. You apply it to the whole body. Not just the place where you have discomfort. The application to the whole body is very important for increasing the nourishment and uh, supplying the nutrients to each and every part of the body. So applying whole body oil application to the whole body is very important. Yeah. So of course you can also use this sesame uh, internally. You can use the sesame oil for cooking. It's also very nourishing. And you can use sesame seeds, till seeds um, in your uh, curry. You can make nice uh, powder out of it to mix in your rice. Or somehow, or, or you can use sesame laddus. So this is all very nourishing. You can also use ragi. Ragi is very good for you know musculoskeletal system. So people use this ragi malt. In our area, it is called uh, ambali ragi malt. That is also good. It's rich in calcium, rich in so many nutrients. And again, this uh, curry leaves, they are also very good for musculoskeletal system. They say kadi patta or uh, in Telugu we call karve paku. So this you can make some powder which can mix in rice and eat something like that or put a sprinkle on the curries and all that is also very nutritious. Yeah, we, yeah, we can uh, do the chutney of this kadi patta. Yes. It's uh, very nice actually. Yes, yes. Tasty. And and one more uh, very useful uh, uh, thing is uh, um, we call it uh, harjod. Harjod in Hindi and uh, in Sanskrit the name is Asthis Rankala. And uh, in botanical name is Sisus Quadrangularis. Here they make nice chutney. Chutney. My sister made a video on YouTube. It says Iron Man chutney. So his hardjod we use it as a medicine for people who have fractures. Bone healing is not happening properly. Cartilage is degenerated in knees and all other places. Shoulder, neck region. There we use it as a medicine, but we also recommend patients to use it as a food. Some patients, they take a, uh, some one and a half inch of long uh, stem of uh, adjord. They peel the skin and they just eat it. That gives a lot of strength to the um, skeletal system, musculoskeletal system. This is very useful actually. I can also think I can show Adjod. So this is Adjod. So if you peel off the skin, it will be more like aloe vera. I think it is visible. Yes, we yeah. yes. So it's very, very good for uh, musculoskeletal problems. So it grows like anything. It's actually, you know, it grows like a weed. If you allow it to grow, it grows like anything. And it's very, very good, very, very strengthening, nourishing 
herb available everywhere in India. You can grow it in like a small pot like this. It will climb, it's a climber. You can put it in your balcony and grow it. How to use this? So you can, uh, you know, take a one inch long stem. Stem is the useful part here. So, and scrape the, just like you scrape the bottle guard, you know, like that you can scrape the skin. The sharp edges you can scrape and then crush it. And if you are not diabetic, you can just dip it in honey and swallow it without chewing. Because harjod, if you chew it in your mouth, it can cause, some people it can cause itching. So it is better to uh, swallow it without chewing. That is one way. Otherwise, you can always uh, make a nice chutney. Here we make this nalir patsudi. It's called adjur chutney. It's very, very tasty. <laughs> You know, hardwood capsules, dry powder of the stem. Each capsule is 10 to 20 rupees per capsule. It's available <laughs> in the market. And it is available for free. We all can grow and eat. It's very nutritious. So, it's very important for us to strengthen our musculoskeletal system. Because it... <laughs> supports a daily even to sit on the chair also you need a lot of muscles working continuously it's not like uh, by sitting in a chair no, nothing is working your muscle, musculoskeletal system is continuously working so except when you are sleeping when you're sitting, standing, walking, doing whatever you are doing, some or other muscle is always working, always contracting, and another set of muscles are relaxing. This flexion and extension of muscles are happening continuously, even for minutest movement, like you move your eye muscle, eye also, you just look this way, that way, without moving your body, even moving your eyeball also will need a set of muscles to contract and other set of muscles to relax. Flexion and extension helps, you know. So each and every part of the body. And many muscles are involuntarily working continuously. So uh, the muscles which I am telling right now in the body, you know, various parts of the body, uh, which we can look at, this quadriceps, biceps, triceps, all are voluntary muscles. But there are so many involuntary muscles which are working inside our vital organs, like heart, lungs, digestive system. And all these muscles need a lot of nourishment. And that nourishment we can get only when we eat the food, select the right food, eat it in the right way, the right time. Time is very important. So, I don't know how many of you have already completed your dinner. But you have completed it, you are, you know, get taking good care of your body. If you are eating late, so early food is, particularly in the night time, you know, uh, early dinner is the best way to help your body stay healthy always. And yeah. uh, yes. Yeah, uh, I'm taking, means uh, most probably all are taking breakfast and lunch in time, but dinner we are taking late. Uh, that, that is the yes. most biggest uh, difficulty or yes. the wrong thing we are doing. Yes, yes, yes. yes. So and we one need more to do thing, some, yes. Yeah, yeah. there should be mus muscle st uh, stretching is needed. Muscle? Uh, stretching. stretching means yoga. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, I know. Any muscle, any muscle needs continuous exercise. So stretching of muscles actually 
simple stretching helps in relieving so many pains physiotherapists when muscles get contracted and some particular part gets uh, some catch or something like that all they do is stretching exercise so stretching relieves pains stretching decreases pains and stretching strengthens muscles so stretching exercise is very good you know in yoga for uh, in the initial stage they do sukshma vyayam the sukshma vyayam is like um not a lot of stretching and a lot of uh, flexing and ex- extending your muscles but simple movement of each and every joint of the body right from the fingers to the major joints all, all joints including your eye muscles eye muscles to thigh muscles every muscle will be moved every joint will be moved in this sukshma vyayam so we make our patients in patients even bedridden patients to do this sukshma vyayam so many people say i am in i can't move my body i am like i have a lakwa i have a you know paralysis attack how can i do exercise um, only a physiotherapist can make me do exercise no it's, it's very important for them to take active part and for them we suggest sukshma vyayam so sukshma vyayam will start you know mobilizing each and every joint and once that happens your body will be ready for higher exercises where you stretch your body you you know what is the difference between exercise and yoga asana this is something we need to understand so in exercise we try to flex and extend the muscles rigorously and that will give strength that will increase blood circulation uh, that will reduce fat overall it will strengthen all the joints and muscles tendons ligaments everything will get strengthened when you do exercise to a specific specific set of exercises to strengthen a specific uh, set of joints specific set of muscles so you can take the suggestion of a physiotherapist or some doctor and uh, try doing these exercises to strengthen specific set of muscles but when it comes to yoga asanas yoga asanas are not exercises you know asanam is like we define asanam as sthiram sukham asanam sthiram sukham asanam so asan is like a posture where you try to spend maximum time it's not like you go back go to the posture come back go to the posture come back like exercise no maximum time we try to stay in that particular posture this you can say proper stretching exercise so if you are sitting in simple um, sukhasana or padmasana or vajrasana or other a bit uh, standing poses like tadasana or lying down pose you know poses like bhujangasana shalabhasana whatever asana it is if you are staying in that particular asana for a longer duration in that particular posture for a longer duration then we can say it is as a asana and asana always involves a set of breathing generally when you observe when you are doing some pull ups or push ups or running or something like that most of the time when you are doing it with a lot of energy you are you are holding your breath so that becomes anaerobic exercise that's why people always say do aerobic exercises where you will be continuously breathing in and breathing out while performing these exercises so especially for yoga asanas for yogic postures breathing is very important so when you are going into that posture in each and every step you know, inhale and exhale will be involved and when you are on that particular posture then as long as you are there in that posture they ask you to take deep breaths so and again coming out of that posture also it involves a specific set of inhaling and exhaling so breathing is very important during doing asanas 
so that is the difference between exercise and yogasana but i will also tell you the difference of you no know, exercise as i've told you it will reduce fat increase blood circulation strengthen muscles strengthen joints that is all good but when you look at the effect of asanas asanas are there to stimulate a specific set of organs and organ systems they can actually enhance the function asanas can enhance the function of you know uh, specific uh, organs and organ systems if you want to uh, strengthen your liver or your heart or your lungs or your kidneys you want to enhance their function you want to um, you know ensure healing of in specific uh, organ systems organs of the body they are possible by performing yoga asanas so there is this special uh, thing called therapeutic yoga where healing happens while you perform specific set of asanas so that is the difference between doing exercise and asanas in fact uh, in universal human values the best form of exercise is shram labor so when you are doing some activity where you are physically active whether you are cleaning your house or washing clothes or washing dishes or gardening or whatever you are doing you walk a little to fetch some um, you know things needed in the house playing with your kids all these things can under labor where there is some kind of productivity you produce something you do something you cover a, a mile or 2 kilometers or you do something some activities being done so there is some productivity that is labor we call it shram then exercise is something where there is no productivity of course we strengthen our muscles and you no know, increase the blood circulation and all but uh, for example if you use a cycle and travel some 2 3 kilometers that is shram but the same cycle you ride it in a gym you know then you are not going anywhere you are there doing the cycling thing or walking on a treadmill so there it's just strengthening your body but there is no productivity in it so we call it exercise so next level is yoga asanas yoga asanas as i've told you they are not just there to strengthen a specific set of muscles they can stimulate they can work at the level of organs and organ systems so they can enhance the effect of efficacy of function of specific set of organs and organ systems and of course when you do asanas regularly you will be eligible to practice pranayam it's not like everyone can practice pranayam everyone can perform pranayam those people who are fit enough to do asanas exercise they only can do pranayam accurately and when you do pranayam it actually works at the level of you know much much higher level cellular level it can help in regeneration of each and every cell of the body pranayam is so effective in our hospital people come with severe degeneration so from severe degeneration to regeneration degeneration in the bones degeneration in some specific organs degeneration in disc cartilage muscle in from that stage people travel to the stage of regeneration with the help of pranayam pranayam is so effective so at the level of cell it can in- enhance the functions of the body it can enhance the self healing power of the body body can heal itself provided we create an environment which is not disturbing so that the body can naturally heal itself 
and that happens when you regularly practice pranayam pranayam you know this is pranat ayamam ayamam is pause ayamam is pause we are continuously taking the pranavayu pranavayu like in, uh, in sanskrit pranavayu is oxygen so <laughs> continuously you are inhaling and exhaling it is happening continuously so this inhaling and exhaling which are happening continuously they can take a break there can be a pause in between this inhaling and exhaling this pause is pranayam holding the breath is pranayam of course many people won't teach you this they only say anulom vilom so just inhale and exhale inhale and exhale inhaling and exhaling regularly deep breathing and deep exhalation will help in increasing the lung capacity and once your lung capacity increases you can start holding your breath and holding the breath will help in achieving you know some really great things inside the body as i have told you the regeneration part the self healing thing all these things will happen when you practice pranayam i will add one thing bhai here yes. yes sir yes sir ha namaskar namaskar Uh, that is called as a kumbhak when we uh, don't breathe. Yes. Uh, that level is a kumbhak, and that experience is the right experience you can say in the pranayama. Yes. And uh, that is very uh, means where we don't breathe also, not breathe out also. Yes. And uh, if we can increase that level, uh, then uh, we really make a very good uh, part of our self. Uh, we can say uh, development. Yes. Uh, at the same time. Uh, for uh, meditating this level uh, makes a great difference also and uh, whatever we earlier also discussed uh, like uh, all these uh, it's not a part of exercise uh, whatever we are doing yoga actually yes. yoga is the connectivity of mind and the body as well as uh, one self to other self also yes that what what i learned i am just exploring here and yes. uh, what we are also practicing and uh, as as said by the patanjali rushi uh, maharshi patanjali rushi he has given all the sutras in 195 sutras he has explained in explained the asanas so yes. not even one of the asana is mentioned in the that sutra of patanjali yes as you said sthir sukha asanam so yes. we have to be uh, uh, stable in whatever asan we uh, finally take the position final position at True. the same time one more one more we add there that is na hatat na bala there is no uh, we have to not uh, uh, over stress ourselves and yes. uh, we should not uh, force ourselves also that is also what we should learn from this uh, whatever we can uh, that is uh, we can make uh, like one more thing that adhik uh, prayatna we have to uh, increase our uh, efficiency or uh, our little pressure uh, yes. just by mindset only so this is very important if we can do this uh, regularly then i think uh, we can uh, achieve a lot of things that what we are doing uh, in our day practice and giving others also so that what i want to do as bhaiya uh, here thank you thank you very very true sir uh, this is what is actually the need of our yes so, yes 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 um like people think yoga means another kind of aerobic exercise like thing where you stretch your body a lot so <laughs> yoga is the union union of yes, yes. you know yes. so uh, and the inward journey starts from this uh, the eight yes. steps of yoga whatever ashtanga yoga is there yeah yeah, yeah. We, we 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 say as a 11th direction 11th direction our we are in the eight directions in yes. addition to the bottom and top we add 10 yes vertical and uh, this uh, downward and upward and the yes. 11th is the seeing inside inside our yeah. body Yes. and that is what the 11th direction we say that is for uh, that can be uh, we can say achieve through this yoga only yes <laughs> and looking at nice. yes, yes yes thank you thank you yeah yeah you are welcome sir thank you for sharing yeah yeah thank you thank you so i will also try to share my experience with my patients like generally um 
when you practice pranayam there is this pura puraka puraka is inhaling then kumbhaka kumbhaka is holding the breath then we have rechaka rechaka is exhaling so also we have an advanced stage like shunyaka where you hold the breath after exhaling so initially we teach only puraka kumbhaka and rechaka and initial stage initial ratio will be just 1 is to 2 is to 1 very very simple for example if you are counting while you are inhaling and counting for 5 while you are inhaling and then you hold your breath for 10 count then you will exhale again for 5 5 10 5 we encourage the our patients to increase this count slowly day by day 6 12 6 in fact we ask them to practice as much as possible whole day whenever you are free whenever the stomach is empty you practice pranayam rigorously you practice pranayam continuously you practice pranayam consistently you practice pranayam this is what we say we say that this will help in enhancing the effect of therapy they are taking in our hospital so slowly we ask them to increase the ratio like slowly 7 14 7 like that we ask them to increase it till they reach 15 30 15 so after the this we say you have completed the first level so it's like just to encourage them they have crossed the first level then you can go to the second level there again we change the ratio inhaling is 1 holding the breath is 4 and then exhaling is 2 so here you will see that holding the breath becomes more if you are inhaling for 5 count 5 seconds then you are holding the breath for 20 count and then exhaling for 10 count almost 30 seconds you are neither um you are not at all breathing new air inside 30 seconds like that we ask them to increase 6 24 12 like that slowly ask them to reach till they go till 15 60 30 yes. then we say second level is over and i have observed that when people complete the second level most of the problems are solved many of the problems with which they come to us they get resolved they become very active <laughs> <laughs> physically they become strong mentally they become very very strong mental strength increases in fact you can tap the hidden potential when you are practicing pranayam regularly and uh, this regeneration happens for patients with so many degenerative diseases when they regularly practice pranayam this regeneration happens stress comes down and control over mind control over senses that increases sanyam increases so many people even if they don't want to worry if they want to relax they just get accustomed to constant internal mental chatter and it happens uncontrollably involunt involuntarily it happens so when they practice pranayam slowly they will be able to observe what's happening inside their mind continuously and they'll be able to control it control the thoughts control this chatter happening involuntarily and uh, and when they practice pranayam we also ask them to practice meditation so you can see this is the next step so when i have told you that the, this um exercise it strengthens the muscles reduces fat increases blood circulation asanas they stimulate the organs and organ systems and enhance the functions of specific organs and organ systems pranayam acts at a cellular level 
so it helps in regeneration of new cells of course it also helps in strengthening their mind gaining control over their mind it improves the self healing power of the body and when you practice meditation it is on a totally different level if you speak in the terms of body you can say it will work on the dna level it brings about changes even at the level of dna we have seen you know patients with cancer where their you know genetically dna level the normal cells turn into cancer cells at that level you can see wonderful change and they come back to normal healthy uh, stage at that level this uh, meditation will help both the, in strengthening the body and strengthening the mind so it's so effective so useful so we regularly encourage the patients to practice meditation and uh, it's not like we conduct yoga classes morning and evening but along with that we ask them to practice this meditation put this practice of meditation into practice you know um, practical way whole day when you are trying to focus on one particular thing either it is on your breath or some mantra or some anything else so you will be able to uh, put this into practice the whole day in various activities not just in uh, you know mm. Uh, like uh, in the morning time you focus on a deity or on your breath or uh, on a on a lamp that is all okay day to day activities for example if you are doing brushing if you are brushing your teeth we ask them to focus on only brushing the teeth and nothing else focus on that brush as if you, no one else in the world can brush their teeth better than you you are not thinking about anything else except brushing your teeth I'm sorry. I'm using my cell phone to do this Zoom call, and I was getting calls. Um, so we have seen, you know, what happens in cancer. Cancer cells. Normally, every cell dies. Every cell dies, but. and this happens naturally self destruction happens for every cell it happens but cancer cells they switch off this mechanism switch off the self destruction part so they will not die they will keep on dividing 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 and this happens at a level of dna the change happens at the level of dna and they don't die they'll keep on dividing 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 the tumors they increase in size and you know and they spread from one part of the body to another part, part of the body this happens because cancer cells they don't die but when you practice meditation and pranayam this mechanism which got switched off will be switched on again and naturally cancer cells will die so this happens when you practice meditation you know in even healthy people there are some cancer cells 
and they die and that's why we are, don't, we are not getting affected but when this mechanism is switched off cancer spreads like wildfire so practicing meditation in each and every aspect of your life when you are listening to this session if you are not doing anything else you are just focusing you are giving undivided attention to this session only and you are doing meditation if you are washing your clothes or you know polishing your shoes whatever you are doing you are giving undivided attention to that particular task sound divided attention razor sharp focus this is how you put meditation into practice in day to day activities so achieving this razor sharp focus in whatever you are doing and not thinking about nothing else this is the outcome of regular practice of meditation and this will work wonders in various diseases even while having the therapy we do some external therapies like shirodhara or massage or steam bath whatever therapy they are undergoing we ask the patients to observe what's happening in your body while the therapy is going on don't think about anything else don't focus on anything else just observe what's happening when the person is touching your body when they are pressing your body when they are doing the massage or when the steam is coming when the oil is falling on your forehead what's happening what changes are you experiencing inside your body observe that and we say even that is meditation so this is how we help our patients increase the speed of healing and uh, increase the regenerative power self healing power so i'm sure many of you are already practicing pranayama and meditation in fact we suggest patients to go to a higher level like practice of silence which we say it's much higher than meditation practicing silence or shunya sthiti you can say thoughtless state this again we ask them to practice regularly while they are taking therapy in our hospital we ask them to experience this state of thoughtlessness so we tell them you know we give them a simple exercise like we we, we tell them that we we can divide our thoughts you know there are around 50000 to 60000 thoughts per day on an average any human being experiences 50000 to 60000 thoughts per day continuously like a fl- flowing river is thoughts happen continuously so if you want to experience this state of thoughtlessness first you need to observe your thoughts this is what we teach in the practice of shunya sthiti or silence we divide thoughts into two happy thoughts and sad thoughts of course there are some miscellaneous thoughts but generally thoughts which will make you happy and thoughts which will make you sad and even there also thoughts which are about things which happened in the past past thoughts or about the future future thoughts similarly sad thoughts also past thoughts future thoughts so not more than this of course there are some miscellaneous thoughts which are very minute in number but mostly when you observe your thoughts either you get happy thoughts or you get sad thoughts either the thoughts about events or things or people in the past or in the future that's all so we ask them to imagine a mental toll gate where these thoughts are traveling like vehicles and you are at the check post at the toll gate each thought enters this mental toll gate you stop the thought and see whether it is a happy thought or sad thought past thought or future thought 
observe what is this thought and then let it go so you are at the mental toll gate you are not worried about this particular thought you are like with complete detachment you just analyze the thought you are not worried about the content of the thought you are just looking at whether it is a happy thought or sad thought whether it is regarding a past thing or a future uh, event which you are worried about so just observe the thought even if it is a happy thought be detached and let it go even if it is a sad thought be detached and let it go so we ask them to continuously observe these thoughts and let them go observe let them go without getting involved in those thoughts and without making them bigger and bigger thoughts so then a stage happens when there is a gap between the old one thought goes away and another thought is coming and still in between there is a gap this gap is called a state of silence normally silence is like if you don't speak anything if you do a mauna vrata we think it is silence but here silence is not having any thoughts even if you are reading a book you are in conversation with the author you are watching tv or listening to music we can't say that is silence so experiencing this state a gap in between the thoughts and then slowly increasing this gap experiencing a longer state of thoughtlessness that we call as shunya sthiti so we encourage patients to sit in a state of shunya sthiti try to experience it and record it we have a day to day activity tracker for all the patients so we uh, give print and give so in that they will have this pranayam asanas then practice of meditation silence and of course we also have affirmations and visualizations so every day they'll write the date for example today is uh, 16 12 22 if they practice pranayam in the ratio of some 6 is to 12 is to uh, 6 into 20 rounds they'll write or they'll just tick asanas in how many minutes maybe 20 minutes per day or 30 minutes like that meditation some 30 minutes silence 10 minutes affirmations three times they read affirmations practice visualization three times like that they write every day they write the record and we review their progress and this helps a lot patients are very you know uh, very much uh, affected positively with this practice along with regular uh, treatments and medicines and diet modifications these are the things which will um not cost anything all of us can practice these things affirmations are like mantras day by day in every way i am getting better and better healthier and wealthier happier and prosperous my back is becoming stronger my neck is becoming stronger like whatever problem you have you write mantras like you already they are cured they are solved or you can write about your relationship my my relationship with my wife is becoming stronger i'm happy i'm communicating better with my kids with my parents like that all you can write about your career my financial st- uh, stability is becoming stronger you can write whatever you want and read it like mantras that is affirmation then about visualizations particularly in our patients we have right now we have some around five patients who are completely bedridden the for every patient we ask them to practice visualization but specifically for patients who are unable to move we ask them to visualize as if ask them to look at a screen before their eyes on which they can look at themselves actively doing things climbing stairs running swimming uh, you know participating in so many activities going to a picnic going to a trip tour you know you know trekking so many things as if they are doing so we ask them to trick their mind so that the reality 
also will become the same. So these all these things will help in regeneration of each and every cell of the body. Even the nerve cells, they, they say that nerve cells cannot be regenerated. But we have seen changes in the brain in various nerves happening. People who got completely paralyzed neck below, they are moving, they are doing activities thanks to the self-healing power of the body which get enhanced with all these activities. So I hope um, some of you can put them into practice every day so that uh, this will actually um, bring a lot of change in your day-to-day -day activity. Dr. Ganesh Chattopadhyayji, you want to ask something? You can unmute and ask. Namaste, Bhaiya. Namaste. Uh, actually, I wanted to know that uh, the meditation, uh, what is the procedure, as you say, please? Can you uh, give certain uh, yes. lights on that? Medi meditation, how to sure. do? Yeah. So initially, initially, the very simple thing is try to focus on whatever you are doing. Particularly if you are sitting in uh, for 10 minutes or 20 minutes in the morning time, you want to uh, meditate. You can choose anything. You can focus on your breath. You can focus on a favorite God or if focus on your mantra or focus on a one small dot on the wall. Whatever you choose to focus, anchor your mind to that particular thing, either to the breath or to a mantra or to a, some simple lamp or whatever it is, or a picture of the deity or your guru, whatever you want to anchor your mind to, just fix your mind on that particular thing. And what happens generally is when you fix, uh, you know, in the mind, it tries to go away and it wanders like anything. You need to bring it back and put it back onto the um, particular thing um, where you want to focus. This is something which you need to practice regularly and slowly you can put it into practice whole day. And as suggested uh, uh, by Parishad Bhaya, you can join the morning meditation classes by our guru, Dr. Uh, Ganesh Bagaria Ji. So it's open for all and uh, it's not just a session of meditation. It is much, much more than uh, meditation. It is like a, a new turning point for many people who are experiencing these wonderful morning meditation activities. You all can join in the Zoom uh, link, which will be provided. So that will help you actually practice the right form of meditation. So if you are interested, you can contact Parishad Ji and they will help you register for it. And it is free of cost and always it will happen always every day. Okay, okay. Um, uh, I'd like to know, say, uh, I am a disciple of Ramakrishna Mishana, okay? okay. So, we do certain practices, I, I think, as you say, the, the diet also comes under the meditation. I mean, we do focus on our guru, say, Ram, Ram Krishna. Yes. Uh, somewhere. So, the, that means it also comes under the meditation itself. Yes, yes, uh, yes. Uh, we have been doing that, uh, say, after I, I took the, uh, the Diksa uh, in the year 1998, actually. Oh, uh, from, uh, Misana. So that, that means we have been doing that. We know yes. something. Okay. That, that is a part of that. On different ways, as you say, the different uh, focusing point, maybe anything. Uh, yes. But okay, we are focusing to uh, something. Yes. Fix. Uh -huh. Yes. And thereby gaining control over our mind, which ah, normally ah. jumps from one focus to another thing to another thing like that. Ah, ah, ah. So here you are allow you are not allowing it to jump from one place to another. You are trying to focus on mm. one particular thing. Correct, correct, correct. Sometimes what happens, we feel very comfortable and sometimes certain lightning. I mean, it, it rare happens, but we see something is happening over rare and feel very comfortable, very easy, and see very light. Body feels, we feel very light. Yes, body, yes, like yes, yes, very 
अच्छा भाई साहब अनदर थिंग एज यू ऑलरेडी मेंशन दैट प्राणायाम से 20 मिनट्स आसन आज 20 मिनट्स दैट वे यू आर सेइंग ना मेडिटेशन 30 Silence. No, no. It's not like it's not a fixed uh, this thing. I'm just um, giving you an example. How our uh, patients they fill the activity tracker. Ah, ah. Okay. Then the say third point, fifth point. What was it? Then I could not uh, actually catch it up. Uh, like when pranayam, then asana, then meditation, then silence, then after uh, that a, a a something affirmations, start... affirmations, affirmations, affirmation. Yes. Achha, affirmation right. affirmation is like you want to do something you want to become something you write lines as if you are already doing it mm mm they are like mantras you Achha. read them and uh, you you know you are giving auto suggestion to the brain that they are happening they are happening like that it's mm. like self hypnotism you are strengthening mm. your mind like that that's the, these are affirmations you can Achha. include various aspects of your life in that you can write and read it every day you know just like our mantras are uh, affirmations for the world peace like you always say om shanti shanti sarve bhavantu ah, sarve santamaya like that you write about yourself acha that, is, that is, it is writing by hand or means in our mind you are saying like that no no you will write it in a notebook acha on a paper and you read it reading this is again and again is affirmation yes okay and and by that that way uh, visualizing uh, visualization master? visualization visualization is it is a you know in, in a better bit better form of affirmations like as i've told you there are so many patients in our hospital who are bedridden mm-hmm. so for them we ask mm-hmm. them to close their eyes and imagine a screen before their eyes ha ah, ah, ah. and on that screen they imagine themselves in ah. minutest detail like what clothes they are wearing what kind of uh, you know shoes or chappal they are wearing whether they have combed their hair whether they are wearing spectacles watch all even minutest detail they'll see and they will create a scene where they are walking they are running they are doing so many things they are happily enjoying with their family Which hmm. is, which they are not able to do presently. Acha. So this visualization helps in manifesting that. Ha ha ha. Correct. So correct. manifesting this, uh, you know, um, thing which you want to manifest is something hmm. um, we we all can do in various ways. Like you know, you want um, um, you to become more flexible, more stronger. more active more peaceful mm-hmm. more calm so mm-hmm. that you can visualize in a scene ah ha correct so yeah. that already as if you are doing that mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Is, so so that is then what is the difference between these as you saying that with the contemplation as you affirmation know? affirmations and visualizations difference between them na na ah. that contemplation as you know from our you age we that program yes, actually yes, that yes. visualization is more like a you know audio visual uh, this thing it's, it's more like you are looking as if see someone takes a uh, video of you hmm. and puts in the tv and you look at it you are you look uh-huh. at yourself so hmm. you will see everything so clearly and you are, that means you are talking about that visualizing by our eyes or within mind or like that in imagine mind, in the mind in the mind mind mind, mind. In the mind you look at a picture correct a correct the video like that ha uh-huh. uh, that that we understand as a by then is that this is the ratio or you say pranayam 20 minutes 20 minutes no no not minutes count for example 1 is to 2 is to 1 acha okay then you are counting five while you are inhaling then you hold your breath for 10 then you exhale for five like this is one round like that you do 20 rounds 30 rounds 40 rounds acha like that achha. maybe to, today whole day you have practiced for 20 minutes acha 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 then you write it in the tracker 20 minutes in this ratio is so many rounds this like, ratio this is actually ratio that that means the 20 20 30 uh, 10 3 3 like that way yes okay so, Thank you. Thank you. We recommend safely. You can practice one is to two is to one ratio. Ha so ha. Whatever count you are inhaling, double the count. You hold the breath. It's very safe. You don't need any guru to do that. Hmm hmm hmm. 
ठीक 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 थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक वेलकम गणेश जी Parishit Bhaiya, someone in the chat, they were asking about uh, the link to morning meditation session. Ji Bhaiya, I have noted down uh, Prabhat Bhaiya's request and we will uh, do the needful. Ji. Yes. Is it daily, sir? Is it daily? Or is it uh, once in a week? Every day. Look, we are no, attending. Yeah, we are at, we are just uh, talking about this morning, our morning meetings. The same meeting, is it? Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. I thought it's a separate meeting in the yoga. No, no, no. Same, same, same meeting. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Namaste. So, yeah, namaste. Thank you, thank you, Sundar Bhaiya, for this interactive and interesting session. And we like to hear you more and more. But it's this uh, respect the circadian rhythm as well. So let's call it a day, and we'll again meet for this. Okay. Namaste. 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 Namaste, everybody. You. you can call it a day. Namaste. Namaste, Parikshadai. Namaste. 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 Namaste.